Hello, this is Michael Palermo with the Developer Relations team at Here Technologies. In this video, I'd like to show you how to add a domain to a whitelist that you can control in your project's profile. So I'm going to go to my profile right now to my projects. And I'm going to select the only project that I have. It's a freemium account. And now that I am in this area, you'll notice I have already created an API key for use with the JavaScript client-side library. So if I wanted to use that API key, I just need to copy it. Now I've already used it in two sites that you're about to see. But we're going to come back here so we can learn how to create a domain whitelist for your app credentials. In other words, whatever domain name we place in the list, it will be the only thing that will have granted access to your credentials. So currently we have none, so I have two different sites using this API key. One called here-whitelisted, which is the subdomain name, and then another one called here-whitelist-none. So again, that's the subdomain name to these Netlify apps. Both of them are loading error-free, as we can see here in the developer console. Again, both using the exact same code, using the exact same API key. So of course, what we want to do now is go back over into the profile here and re-examine that checkbox. See, when we check that, it's giving us a little information that we can do it by subdomains or just by the domain itself, and you can do up to 20. So what I want to do is add just one of those sites, the one that would be the uh, the whitelisted one, the here whitelisted one. So I'm going to copy that domain right now, and I'm going to bring it back over into my project and paste it in here. Now I need to get rid of the HTTPS moniker at the beginning and also remove the forward slash at the very end. So all that's there is this subdomain plus the domain name. Now with that stated, it is the only thing that is allowed to use my credentials at this time. If I wanted to, I could add more and I would just do that in the next box. Again, up to 20 of these per your account. But in this example, only one site is going to have access to my credentials. So I'm going to save this. Now, of course, what we might wonder, once it's saved, what's going to happen when we go and review the content again? So the one we just added to the whitelist, when we refresh it, we see our content. So what do we suppose will happen when we refresh the other one? Well, if you do it right away, you're probably going to get the same thing. So you're, ne you're going to need to wait about an hour for everything to sync up. But once that has happened, you'll then notice that the next time you refresh, it's going to look something like this. So I did wait about an hour to come back. And you can see there is no content. And of course, we'll check what it would look like with the whitelisted one. But notice all the errors over here. And now when we go to the whitelisted one and refresh the content, you'll see all the content is there as we expect. And there are no errors in our developer console. When we examine or refresh the other one, which was not even listed, we're going to get errors and not the content that we expect. So what do we gain from this? It's relatively easy for you to add a domain to your whitelist area. We've added one. Uh, if you ever wanted to remove one of these from your project, just hit the minus key here and it will confirm or you can use the plus key to add more. So in this video, you've learned how to add and remove domains to your whitelist.